It's peep code. Ryan Singer is the user experience architect at 37 Signals in Chicago. Last week, I sat down with him and gave him a task to design from scratch. Here it is. You and a group of friends want to guess who the top five finishers will be in an upcoming pro bicycling race. There's a list of 200 participants, and you'll need to pick five in order. The winner, the second place finisher, on down through number five. How would one design an interface and a workflow to accomplish this in a web browser? Ryan approaches this problem in two parts. This video captures his initial thought process on paper. Part two is a separate video where he implements a prototype in HTML and CSS. Ryan makes many brilliant observations throughout this video, but the thing I was most impressed with was the level of skill with which he attacked the problem. We often try to master specific software programs or coding frameworks, but here he shows that there's no substitute for time and experience spent thinking through problems and learning from the final product. Look for the way he thinks through the various options, evaluates each, and keeps moving toward a solution. This is peep code play-by-play. -play. It's about watching expert developers and designers work unhindered. We won't pause to explain difficult concepts or water down the workflow, but I think you'll appreciate seeing a master at work. That's interesting to me. Um, if I were to um, start working on a product, you know, um, I wouldn't be able to get very far just thinking about the sort of one step, like here's, here's how you pick Five, you know what I mean? Like so. Right. So I mean. So it's not just isolated. It's the whole. If 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 if, if it's just picking five um, five picks, <laughs> um, then there are a handful of different UI ideas we could come up for that, um, and um, none of them would be massively better than the others. You know, and it, I mean, it might be interesting to see the process of sort of coding it and everything. So we can definitely do that. Uh -huh. um, I the kind of work that I'm usually doing is more like, okay, so, you know, first we're going to, we're going to have some screen where we, where we pick the, where you pick your five, somehow you're going to have a list of five things that you chose, right? Yep. But um, I want to know, like, how, like, how did you get there and what's going to happen when you're done? And then, like, how do the people who pick it, like, do they have accounts? You know what I mean? Like, yep. they're signing in, and then like it is when they're signing into this thing. Is there only is there only one thing going on at a time? Maybe we could assume that that we could like sort of constrain the domain so our problem space is simpler, and we could say that there's there could never be more than one race going on at a time, right? Just yep. so that we have less to design. Uh huh. Um, and uh, and then if I make my picks, then I guess I could I have some kind of result which is like. Um, you know, ta-da, like, that's supposed to be a check mark. <laughs> ta-da, you did a good job, you made your picks. Now, wait and see what happens with the game, right? Uh -huh. and, but now I'm thinking, like, what, what is the next action here? Like, as a user, if I, if I choose my five things, um, if, if I am doing this as a, let's say I sit around the table with my buddies, and we all do this together, like, this is our... I don't. I don't actually know how these fantasy things work. I'm imagining right. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, if if it was all happening in person, then um, there would be a lot of context just from the social environment where I wouldn't have the the app wouldn't have to be explaining all this stuff to me about like what happens next. And, uh -huh. and and you know what I mean. Yeah. But uh, because I would just be with my friends and they'd be like, okay, everybody, type them in here, because then it's going to be easier for us to just manage later. As if as if we were just typing them into a spreadsheet. Uh -huh. um, if this is happening in a distributed way, where it's kind of like people who are remote from each other, it's like kind of uh, more like strangers together, like sign into the system and then you can bet and then the winner wins something, yep. which I think is maybe a more interesting problem. Because uh, the first problem you could just solve with an Excel sheet. You don't need an app for that. Right. Um, uh, if it was something distributed, then um, when I finish making my picks, since I'm not sitting around the table with a bunch of buddies and I'm not just waiting for one of them to call me, or I'm, we're not going to get together and have a beer when the game happens to know who won. Uh -huh. I want to know, how do I find out if I won this, what was it, a t-shirt or 
Uh, a shop apron. A shop apron. To keep your tools in and uh-huh. your, okay. You know. Yeah. How am I going to know if I won the shop apron or not? Right. Right. So um, if I need to be notified of the shop apron, then I would probably need to maybe provide an email address. Uh huh. Right. Um, so um, so it, it, this since this commu- there is a sort of time time passes right. Yeah. Like some UIs, you can jump in and you can accomplish the whole task through a sequence of actions on the screen and then you're done and then you walk away and you don't care about the state when you're done. Um, but um, uh, but in this case, I'm going to actually create some state and then that state needs to somehow come back and poke me in the future. Right. Um, so I want to I know how to make that happen. So, um, so I'm thinking that um, it's one part of this is that I need to have some screen where the f- function of the screen, the task that I'm trying to execute is make my picks. Yeah. Right. Um, and that has certain constraints around it that it has to happen before the game starts and so on. Um, after I've made my picks, then then it's done. I supposedly, I, I guess I can't change them. Can I change them? You can change them up to a, a point in time. Okay, up you to know, a certain point in time. Up to, you know, 90 minutes before the race actually starts or something like uh-huh. that. Okay, so here we have a sort of branch in the design decision tree because if we allow you to make changes, then we care about authentication. Yep. Or we care about proving who you were so that you can change some state that you supposedly own. Uh huh. If we don't care about allowing you to change it, then we can skirt that whole problem. And we never have to allow you to authenticate because basically you can just give us an email address. Okay. And then oh, when yeah. the whole thing is over, then we can send you an email with the outcome. Uh-huh. Um, so um, for our purposes, if we want to make this really a super micro domain, you know, then we could keep authentication out of it. Good point. I yeah. would propose that. Uh-huh. Does that satisfy you as the domain expert? <laughs> would that be all right? Or would yeah. you prefer yeah. that? Yeah, that's okay. all right. One thing to, that you, know, you got me thinking about the state afterwards is that this definitely is a social thing. People are doing it all around the world, and you get to see what everyone else chose. So you uh-huh. get to see who their five picks were. So maybe right. that's an after screen. That would be interesting. Also, there's a kind of humorous thing to where, you know, this started as just comments on a blog. You just type your your five writers on a blog, and then right. presumably somebody would go through and manually kind of add this up somehow, right. you know, which is painful. And people would choose humorous nicknames for all the writers that they picked. And so uh, so then another part of the after after you've picked is kind of looking at the humorous nicknames that other people have uh-huh. chosen okay. for, you know. That, that the, is the a reinforcing the decision um, not to allow you to change your picks. Okay. Right? Because if you make your picks and then you get, the result of making your picks is you get to see what everybody else picked, then there's a kind of, uh, you know what I mean? There's a kind of purity in like picking without knowing what everyone else is picking versus right. not. I don't know if if people care about that or not. But you see how that could either reinforce that decision or 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 not. Definitely. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we could actually do, um, uh, we could do uh, make your picks. Um, some kind of result happens. We for sure need to have some way to say, um, that you succeeded, but we also, it sounds like it'd be fun to show how do your picks compare to everybody else's. Um, and then um, these could be, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say like, um, let's say we had something else here for like, um, uh, you know, uh, this is how your picks stack up against everybody else, and then here's all the other people's picks, like, and then yours, yours is like down here, number, you know what I mean? Like your top pick was number 27 of everybody else's or something, or you know, who knows, right? Um, or you maybe this is seventy percent the same as other people, or yeah, totally right. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different ways that we could get into that, um, and um, and then these could actually be these could be like the same screen, or they could be different screens. You know what I mean? This could this this either way. I want to say um, good job, you did it, and that could be just like a sort of headline on the top of this, uh-huh. you know. And then here's a, here's whatever else happened, or it could be like. Ta-da! You know, like a like a game. You know, the games have lots of unnecessary states because they're fun. Um, so you could have the state where it's like the pinball machine explodes or whatever happens. You know what I mean? Like you get this big, like, whoop, boom, you know, like awesome, and then you click, and then it sh- and then it takes you to the next thing. Right. Um, I'm not much of an entertainment or game designer, so if we were working with somebody else, then that would be a cool thing to consider. Uh-huh. I would probably, you know, since my thing is more. Um, applications, functional, getting job, getting work done, kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we might do something simpler. Um, 
And uh, and then and then after this, we have this other thing that we talked about. So let's say this this together is kind of like the flow for for picking, you know. Um, uh, and uh, and then after this, we have to have some kind of other um, uh, some kind of outcome where time passes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And an actual game happens. And then um, how do I find out? I think probably the easiest thing is going to be like um, send me an email. Uh huh. Um, because then we don't have to do any kind of authentication or anything like that. Um, uh, and then we can also, um, we don't, maybe we don't want to just say, thank you, we'll send you an email when this is all over with. Maybe we want to send you an email right away. Okay. To, um, to, to give you something to keep, which is like, um, these were your picks. Yeah, like, like, thank you for participating in this challenge. We're very excited that you are uh, in the running to get this fantastic, what is it, work apron? Yes, yep. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, here, by the way, is the apron again, right? A lovely lady holding the apron or something. And um, uh, here were your picks. Let's, uh, you know, uh, we, we will, uh, you know, uh, maybe there's a link to see the, to see the race results that doesn't require logging in. And, and then also mention that we will send you an email. Uh, with your, you know, with your results at that time, so we could actually be sending, we could be sending you an email now. That's a, that's sort of like a confirmation, and that's of what happened. In addition to having seen a screen saying, "Oh, okay, yes, you you finished your picks," that's an, a second confirmation of, "Okay, I it worked, I did it right, I'm in the system." Yeah, and depending on the sort of game of incentives that are there. If this were a business, you might have some incentives to create more of a relationship. Uh -huh. And if the person who actually had fun making their picks and wants to come back, sending them an email is not against their interest. It might be a case where your interests are aligned. Like, they are happy to kind of get this, this email that's like, you're awesome, here's your picks, here's everything you need to find us again and, and follow up when the race happens. Uh -huh. um, or here's everything you need to watch the race live on our embedded video where you have your advertisers or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Like, um, uh, so like that's a nice alignment there, uh, you know. Uh, um, and then also we have the email that's happening in the future probably to notify you about what happened with your picks and also invite you to come back and see what's going on there. Um, so then, were you going to say something? I like thinking of that holistically because a lot of people think of email is just this old outdated technology and and people don't use oh, email. Man, email's and so like, important. How do you spend, you know, <laughs> half of your day answering and sending emails, you know? Yeah, yeah. So email is totally important. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different, um, I mean, email is UI. It's a diff different output, you know, it's, um, and it's, it belongs into, this, into the flow of everything else. Um, it's not helpful to look at, at, to think of UI as being only the screen level. Because every screen that you're looking at, you have to get there and then you want some result. You know, so I always try and take any kind of screen that I'm working on and... Um, and before I dive really far into the details of the screen, I want to split it up into beginning, middle, and end. Context. Or like, you know, past, present, and future, or whatever. Like these three. Because um, then it, 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 I'm aware that I need to get into it somehow, and then I'm also going somewhere. And then, and, then I, and then thinking through that process, I'm able to think about, for example, the fact that like, in order to do these things, I need an email address. Right. Right. Where if I wasn't interested in the beginning and the end of this, if I was only thinking about these three steps... I don't need an email address to fulfill any of these things. You know what I mean? Right. But in terms of like this thing as a product, it's totally, though. I mean, the, the whole scope is changing when you include the email address because now we're reaching out to them. We have a relationship. We can bring them in to have them watch the, f see the results live as they come in or, or you know, whatever else, right? Um, and we need to tell them if they win or not, all those things. So I guess the one thing that is missing here now is... Um, how do we how do we start this whole thing, right? Um, how it, how uh, how do we get their email address and when do we get their email address? Um, the sort of um, naive approach is we uh, we often have this idea. I actually see this quite a bit, where people are working on an app and then you have this. Um, uh, I need people to I need people to have an account. So I'm going to ask them to make an account. And then they're going to do the stuff that they want to do. And then since they have an account, they're going to be able to do all these other things that they need to be able to do, like log in and whatever. Um, but uh, 
just because we recognize in terms of the domain that we want to have some kind of account or some kind of profile or some kind of user record or whatever, um, it doesn't mean that that has to be a step in the process that is divorced from other things. It doesn't mean that that has to be the first step. Okay. You know what I mean? Like recognizing that this is a, some element in the domain that we have to have, it doesn't automatically force our hands to saying, create your account and then you can pick your, your people. So it could be that, um, that um, when we, when we pick our, uh, when we pick our cyclists, that the process of picking is pick and then give us your email address and then submit. Um, and, uh, and then we can see probably how that could evolve too. If, if, we, if this were actually a community of sorts, which it seems like it has potential to be instead of a one-off thing, you know, that this could easily be um, uh, sign in or create an account. So this is also an opportunity where I'm looking at this in terms of um, we have we have some kind of user record here, you know what I mean, or 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 or, or person uh -huh. or something. We're somehow modeling the the person who made the picks, and um, and for now um, we only need an email in order to fulfill the different kinds of tasks that we're sketching out. But I do care about um, the path forward from the model that we're sketching. You know, um, it it's nice. It's a good smell that if I wanted to, I could, I could, I could add password to this model, and and then at, in the same sort of symmetric to that, uh, I could modify this part of the UI so that we're not only asking you for an email, but that we're saying actually authenticate now, yeah, you know, or create an account, and then we can see how the sort of emails that we would spawn would be a little bit different in that case. But the, we're not changing the sort of mainline sequence of how the product works or what the screens are. We're taking, so it's a little bit like this email only version of the user. I'm seeing it as like a baby version of the user model that could grow into, into, into something bigger. Um, and um, there's probably not a whole lot more to talk about now, I think in terms of laying out, you know, the, it's easy to keep going is the thing, you know what I right. mean? Right. Because um, uh, it, since it's an artificial example, if this were not an artificial example, we would have to make a lot of choices based on what's, what's really important to us. Uh -huh. So, like, um, it's, you're kind of playing the role of the domain expert right now. And um, you could be this sort of fantasy league guy who just loves this stuff and wants this tool to be able to have fun with his friends. And uh -huh. you manage to, like pool some money together to get a prize together, right? Or you could be somebody who sees a market opportunity with Fantasy League people and you actually want to make a product and you know that you're going to be able to do some advertising that actually it's sponsors that are giving you the prize right. and so on. And depending on which one of those things were true, we would be making a decision about this. I'm about to dive into this pick screen. And in order to do that, um, we would be making a decision about how important is it that we advertise the, the prize? See what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you were coming to me, if, if you as the domain expert were actually like, well, you were a business owner, uh -huh. they'd be saying, okay, well, we, we really want these New Balance shoes that you're winning to be featured because New Balance is giving them to us and so on, right? Right. Um, so uh, then that figures prominently into the design of how Exactly. It's it. changing our opinions about what matters. Yeah. Versus if you um, are a pure fan, and this is all the love of cycling, you know, then it's like... Um, uh, we love cycling. Cycling is amazing. We're so excited about this. Who do you think is going to win? And then that's that's what it's all about, right? Uh huh. Um, maybe we. Um, w which direction would you prefer to take? Um. I have to ask you because uh, you're the domain right. expert. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, this somebody is doing this out there in the world. A friend of mine, and it grew out of a blog. Um, they do sell other products. If you didn't win the shop apron, you can go pay $25 and just buy one. Uh -huh. okay. um, so that could possibly be a commercial tie-in on the existing system. Mm -hmm. I would say, well, yeah, why don't we go with that? You know, yes, let's, let's see the shop apron somehow that you're winning. And, okay, so um, it's a little bit about the product. Yeah. And it's about the, f okay, we can try that. We can also find out that we don't like it and change our mind. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, um, 
I have a feeling now of the kind of bigger picture. Um, and um, I can't get further without going into one screen in particular, I don't think, now. So um, what I'm th thinking about now is I'm thinking about um, what screen matters the most. Um, because if I start designing trivial things that are easy to design, um, I'm not going to learn anything about the product. Okay. You know, um, I could design, for example, um, uh, I could design this... Uh, this state that shows you how you stack up. I could, let's let's say arbitrarily, I could I could have some idea in my mind that like I want to do the most complicated thing first, and somehow it seems like there's a lot of meat to to comparing your picks against other people's picks and all this stuff. So maybe you know I want to tackle the meatiest thing first. But if I were to do that, I would be designing a screen that nobody has reached. Um, and if 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 people don't make it through this screen, if this screen isn't successful, then nobody sees this other screen, you know. So that's that leads me here as a starting point. Um, I want to start with a screen that that is important in the app in the sense that like people really have to succeed with it. Um, but I also want to explore a screen that um, kind of makes me think about the domain and gives me like I have to think about the words I'm going to use. And I have to think about the main elements that are there, and I have to think about the data I need to draw from, and um, and I would actually like to have sort of the simplest screen that satisfies all those different needs. You know, I want to have something that forces me to think about the database that I'm touching, that forces me to um, be compelling and provide some kind of value. You know, um, I, but I also don't want to get bogged down by having a whole bunch of unnecessary detail. So this is a really nice place to start. Um, I like this, and actually that's something that's come up with back-end programmers as well, is that I'm not just trying to solve this specific problem, I'm trying to learn about the whole problem in general, and so I'm going to approach this in the way that helps me educate myself about totally. all the issues involved. Totally. Um, at my, um, you know, uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Christopher Alexander, um, and, um, and when I read, um, and I felt a little bit like... Um, like there weren't a lot of other people who were into his ideas about process and how to design and stuff like that. And, um, and then I, I found out that there's a lot of computer people out there who are into design patterns. And I saw, okay, he had an influence there, but it doesn't seem interesting. It's a lot of Java guys. And then uh, I uh, found out about what Kent Beck was doing with TDD. And K Kent Beck took the ideas I was excited about, design process from Alexander, and he made them like real with TDD. And, I always have TDD in my mind when I'm doing design, like right now. Um, okay. I'm thinking of this in terms of um, uh, failing tests, which are just like, uh, it's quite loose compared to programming because you have very specific things that you're testing, right? But, um, but I have this idea that there's things that, there's something that I, is some obstacle to me right now because it's a lack of, either something isn't built that should be built or something I don't know something that I want to know, or there's some, I have ideas about design and they're not proven. So what I want to do is kind of identify the thing that I don't know and then build against that until I get some satisfaction, right? And then it's all about closing that feedback loop. So I have this, um, uh, and I had the chance to actually ask Ken Beck about it too. I was like, is that Alexander? You're in, I know he's an Alexander fan. And I was like, is this Alexander's stuff, the TDD? Is this like, the, he was like, totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? So wow. it, was, it was really cool. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to think about things. Um, so I want to remove some uncertainty okay. about this. Uh, Picking screen. Um, I know that I have some. Here's an interesting thing. I have. I'm, I'm thinking now about the sort of um, part of both the Alexander approach and TDD is that you have some kind of uh, conflict that is a starting point that you want to make go away. Okay. And the conflict I have in my mind right now. It's these, like, how do I questions. <laughs> and the, the how do I question I have is, like, you said, what, 200 cyclists? Right? Yeah. I, Every that's year a, starting the Tour de France is about 200 a, people. That's a lot of anything, you know? And five picks. And I'm thinking about, like, how many things can you show on a screen at once? How many things can you read on a screen at once? I can't read 200 things at once. I can't even read through a list of 200 things. Because, you know, my naive approach to a problem like this would be um, uh, I'm going to have a, some set of things like, um, you know, in, in Basecamp we have this, uh, we have this um, uh, when you're composing a message, 
there's this thing that says like, who do you want to notify of this message? And then there are check boxes for each person who is on the project, you know? And then um, I, want, I want Jason to get this, I want Jay-Z to get this, I want Craig to get this. And then you're picking members of a set, you know? And this is a very standard pattern for dealing with that sort of thing. Um, I can't apply that here, because if I have 200 things, am I, am I gonna, I guess I could. I could have a, a, a list of 200 cyclists sorted alphabetically, um, and then each one has a checkbox and I can only pick five. But um, that doesn't really help me with ordering very right. much. Yeah. Right? It's, I don't get order out of that. I don't get this sort of um, enjoyable feeling that I, I had five slots and now they're full. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. it's how it, how how could I if so I were using a if I were using a pattern like this and I try to check the sixth one what happens? When I check the fifth one do all the other check boxes disappear or what, you know? So my my kind of naive idea was that I would have some whenever I tried to pick some subset right out of a collection is that I'm going to show you all the members of the collection and then I'm going to allow you to toggle some state until you until you've made your yeah, until you've created the state that you want out of that set. Uh -huh. um, but that's not really going to work so well here. So um, so I have some conflicts, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to resolve these conflicts. <laughs> so um, uh, so something I was, just came to mind as I was talking that through um, is, um, is I, I was just thinking that part of why this wasn't satisfying, one reason was there was a conflict with ordering. Another reason is that um, there is something pleasant in having there are five slots fill them, and and um, if if that is what's really happening, you know, um, uh, I that to me feels quite tangible as a as a sort of a um, natural you could say mental model. I don't usually use that phrase, but the person who is coming to pick says I I can pick five. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that the per if you asked if you asked a hundred people to to draw that <laughs> that they could that they would draw like okay a numbered list they would draw like little these are slots you know what I mean these are empty they would draw like a list of five and then fill in the blank or like if I asked them like make a form a paper form to do this right. they would make that probably it's a sort of very natural naive mental concept of of pick five and the and the order matters. Pick your top five. Um, so, it, it, having identified that there is some natural way to see this, I want to optimize for that. If this is the sort of thing that somebody's going to have in their mind, you know, um, then uh, I want to optimize for that. So you try to fulfill expectations. Yeah, I want to. Um, it's a. Um, it's sort of like I have this, I don't know why, it's like my being an eight-year-old just comes into, I never really played baseball very much, but when I was a kid, you know, I had a baseball glove and threw, and threw the ball like with my dad or like what a lot of people did. And I have this strong mental image of um, there's like the ball and the glove that have to come together, you know what I mean? Like, and um, the, um, the sort of uh, mental habits and mental expectations and, and ways of thinking and attitudes and, and words that are handy, all these things in the user's mind, or like the glove and I want to like I need to like fit right into that you know okay. what I mean like yeah. that's 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 I want this moment to be that they load the screen and what's uh, visible on the screen is so close to their mindset that they that they don't that there's no puzzle solving to get from 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 their mindset to my mindset so you're solving the problems for them, asking those hard questions up front so that they, they, they don't have to solve the problem. To yeah, you. I'm trying to think about how they would look at it. And then however they would look at it is what I want to show them. Um, it's a little bit like um, uh, um, uh, this, uh, you know, this model of learning that came up. Uh, this, I, this guy, uh, the guy who invented the programming language Logo, okay. uh, his name is, I think, is Seymour Peppert, right. I think is his name. And, uh, and he was a, either, I think, a friend of this Piaget, who was, a, who was this guy who had theories about education. And he made a big impact in the educational world in, in when was it? I don't know when it was. I'm going to guess 70s, but I'm not sure. Um, and uh, his big innovation was that you can't, um, 
you can't like just put things into people's brains when you teach them. You have to know what their building blocks are and then specifically connect to the building blocks that they already have and build up from the concepts that they already have. And this was also really formative for the way that I'm thinking about UIs. I'm thinking, what are the concepts that people already have who are going to use this thing so I can just plug into those, you know? So I'm not giving them something new to figure out or puzzle through or whatever. Um, so this seems natural. Um, so I'm inclined now that I want to have like, like pick, you know, make your pick or whatever. I've got some headline that's telling them, please, you are here to pick your top five. Please make your, pick your top five. And, um, and I wonder if I can make this happen. Now, I, I, I want to point out that I'm not saying that I've found the design also, right? Like, I'm, I can't really say that the design is right until I get to the screen. Okay. Until I'm actually looking at it and it, it's working for me. Because there's a lot of conflicts I haven't even looked at yet. For example, this. <laughs> for example, the next one. Um, I've got a field of five. How do you fill these out? Right. There are 200 options. How do you fill that out? Um, so uh, we could do autocomplete of a name. Oh, like five different autocompletes where you just start right. typing. Right. That would be one. Okay, I mean, like the, the dumbest idea, not dumbest, but I mean like less, least sophisticated idea would be um, we, we, we print out a list of 200 names below you find the thing that you want and copy and paste it. You know what I mean? Like that would okay. be like the, I'm, tr I'm starting from like if this were paper, right. how would you do it, right? Yeah. You'd have a long list, you'd have, or a little book or something uh -huh. of the 200 contenders, maybe organized by country or whatever, you know what I mean? And then, and then you would write in your pick, right? It would work. Um, can we do better than that? You know, because I think there's a conflict in that, which is that scrolling up and down is not so pleasant. Yep. Like scrolling between your pick area and then the long list and then scrolling back, typing it in, copying and pasting. I mean, it's possible to make mistakes when you select something. So those are all sort of conflicts that I'm not liking. Um, uh, so now we want to diverge from people's expectation, foundational expectations. Yeah, I don't think that there is a pure, found, like ex, there isn't a, some kind of pre-built solution for how people are expecting to do this at this point. You know, I think I've kind of met them by giving them a list of fill out five and now I, I'm thinking, well, how, how am I going to fill this out? Um, I, I kind of like autocomplete, but now I'm running into some limits in my knowledge. So I need to talk to my domain expert. And, okay. and, and uh, uh, what, how, how, what, do, what do the people who are filling this out know about these 200 cyclists? Do they actually know them by name? Like, how do they know who they are? How are they making their pick? Um... Yeah, they definitely know them by name, um, first name, last name, nickname, possibly. Okay. Um, how do they know? They, um, you know, I, there are lists in newspapers or, or uh, you know, they, they can find lists of these writers. The writers are actually grouped into, maybe this is relevant, they're actually grouped into teams. Uh, the writers and the, teams. It's not like a is like a basketball team or something like that because it's both individual and a team kind of thing. But, you know, teams are sponsored by the U.S. Postal Service or, you know, a specific bike manufacturer or something like that. Okay. Um, so each team probably has about 10 riders on it. Uh, they're also... People often know what country people are from, so they'll often... Be, be a fan of, of someone who's from their country or... Uh-huh, okay. Know, so the country, country may matter. Or, yeah. Uh-huh, okay. Um, uh-huh, okay. So um, does the team matter? Is that of interest? There's a separate team classification to where you can see how the teams ranked up against each other, but that's much less relevant. It's mostly people are concerned with, you know, who's the individual who finished uh -huh. first and the, the individual who's second. Okay. Like um, is it is it normal to use that word rider when you refer to the to the person that you pick or the uh yeah, there's actually a famous book which is kind of a stream of consciousness about a race and it's just called The Rider. I actually read just read that over my vacation. Oh, yeah. Um yeah, a lot of a lot of names Cyclist, riser, athlete, com uh, participant. Uh huh. Okay. Because um, I need to model that, and I want to know what kind of word I'm using. For example, if I'm go if I'm going to be building out an interface for this, I mean, what 
what are you auto-completing? Right. You know what I mean? It, I, um, is it is it the name of a rider? Is it a is it a competitor? Is it a is it a pick? You could call it a pick, right? Um, so there's language possibilities there. But it's been it was helpful right now just for me to get I got a little bit of more domain knowledge from you that um, we have riders. Um, I, I it sounds like we don't care about teams, so I think we can call that out of scope for what we're doing right now. Um, uh, it sounds like we could get by with you said that they have a first name, um, they have a last name. You've mentioned nickname a couple times, which is interesting. Um, is do they have a sort of canonical nickname? You know that like everybody knows that this is their nickname, or is it more that like it's a joke that people give them different nicknames, or how 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 does that? Both. There's definitely a canonical nickname for most people, and then people like to joke around with variations off that, or something completely different based on something that maybe they did recently that uh, fits their appearance or their their real name or, or something like that. Uh-huh. So it's okay. a whole, whole variety, and actually the the site that this is this idea kind of comes out of has a lexicon of here's the writer and here are his 10 nicknames or something like that. Oh, interesting. So they have many nicknames. Some, some have many. Yeah, <laughs> they can. Okay. Um, I feel like if we get too much into nicknames, it can sidetrack us oh, from the yeah, core domain right do. now, yeah. but I am just going to leave that mention there, even though I don't know if this is really an attribute of the writer, or if it's more like we might like to think about how we could tack many nicknames onto things, you know, it would be different. And then we have a country, and this seems to be important, actually. Um, uh, uh, so right away, I'm thinking about how would I, how would I like represent a rider? Like if I were to show a rider, what would they look like? Because I need to show you. Um, if you're going to pick a rider's name, we could autocomplete a list of names. Uh, one design could be something like this. Let's say this is the field. Let's say this is pick number one, and you start typing something in here and it could be that we have an autocomplete and uh, and then and then the way it completes is that we actually have we have their name and and we have their uh, we have their country um, as part of the autocomplete and we actually allow you to also type in a country like we could match kind of anything in this line so one way would be a sort of very plain Jane sort of text approach you know um, uh, which is not super sexy, but it, it seems reasonable. Um, if uh, we, we, so this is one way to, I'm thinking of this as one way to like represent a rider. You know, like if I were to show an index of riders, like what would I show? Would it just be their names or what would it be, you know? Um, another way would be um, uh, uh, riders could actually have some kind of um, avatar. Yep. You know, they're known, right? So they have some kind of face, probably. So they, they, they probably have an avatar. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a catalog of that somewhere. Of right. The, um, they have a country. You know, and they have a name. Um, so maybe this is a way to represent a rider. Um, that's definitely going to be more interesting to look at. And it's also going to push more buttons in your brain. You know, if you love whatever, Italy or France or whatever... And that's you're you're really like, you know, patriot with your country. Yep. Uh, then um, when you see that flag, it's gonna be like, yeah, that's my number one. There's my flag right there, number one spot. Ha! You know what I mean? Right. Um, and uh, and that's might increase your enjoyment and also make it easier to spot that the one that you're typing is the one that you want. Extra you know? confirmation. Right. Um, so then these, uh, um, the, so I have this sort of. Um, the kind of failing test in my mind right now is like I don't know how to autocomplete a name, or I don't know how to yeah I don't know how to autocomplete a name, and I'm starting to like make it feel like it's starting to pass because I'm like okay, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna resolve the the conflict that like um, you might not know the name because you care about the country so like I'm gonna let you type in the country and I'm gonna include that in the line item okay somehow whether as text or as the flag when it appears. Um, I uh, I want you to recognize that you know when you're auto completing you might not recognize that it's the one that you wanted so I can, if I show you the f- photo and the flag and then the name then that might increase your ability to quickly recognize that that's the one that you wanted um, so um, maybe that's enough to build out right now okay I'm not the only thing I'm a little not sure about is um, uh, how 
I'm not, I, I don't feel super confident that, um, about not showing a list, about not giving you a menu of, right. of names to browse. And, um, and I really don't know what fits for this because um, uh, I'm a bit far from the domain, you know? Um, You're right. So to be, you know, as we have it now, one just sees this list and, and there's no, right. no right. way to actually browse the names unless you know it, what to start typing from the beginning. Right. So that's interesting. And I, I have to say, it's kind of bothering me, actually. Okay. Um, so I have a, another... I'm sensing with this test-driven development thing, you know, if we're writing code, it's binary, it passed or it failed. Here, it seems more gradiated of, okay, we're getting, we're getting warmer. Right, we're getting <laughs> it is more answer, gradiated, but, yeah. But maybe we're not there. Yeah, it's, um, I, I can't say to pass or fail until I'm looking at the screen, and I'm really using it, and clicking around in it, and then I can get a feeling of pass or fail. Um, up until that point, all this stuff is make-believe, you know? We have, we have to go through the process, but all this stuff is like my speculation about what's going to happen. But I have to do this because if I just go to the screen and I start building stuff out, we could spend together a half hour right now with some stupid detail of CSS or some trying to make finding the right autocomplete plugin or whatever. You know what I mean? Like right. we can spend a lot of time on some direction that we haven't thought through enough and then not be happy with it. Uh -huh. So it's, it's necessary to think through this stuff, but it, it, I like your picture of a sort of passing gradient. And um, for me right now, it's not even a passing gradient. It's a sort of confidence gradient. You know what I mean? Like how much do I believe in this direction? Uh -huh. And then um, if, especially if I'm in a session with other people, I feel like what's happening in the air is we're all trying to get our sort of confidence to come to, you know what I mean? Like the group, the group feeling of confidence behind the design is trying to come together to the point where we feel like, okay, if we back away and spend a day building out a sort of mock of this, you know, or a few hours spending a mock of it, then we're going to feel like that was time well spent because we believed in the direction. Okay. Right? So that's sort of what I'm thinking about. Um, and um, yeah, and I don't have as much confidence as I want to have in this autocomplete thing right now. Um, so I have one other idea. Um, I'm thinking about how, okay, I'm going to express this as a conflict too. Um, uh, it, it would be somehow nice to have a 200 member long list of these. Um, it would look good. It would be interesting to browse through, um, and if you don't, um, if you if you feel like somehow I will know it when I see it, you know, like there was this guy from what was it? It was like an Eastern European country, and he had this name with this like CZ in the beginning, and he was so awesome last year. And I know I bet nobody's going to pick him, but his performance really blew me away. But I didn't know who he was. You know what I mean? Right. This thing, that's a sort of test case. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm. Going through that experience, what's the UI that helps? How, me? how do I how do I resolve that moment? Yeah, you know, um, that's what's bothering me about the autocomplete because it doesn't it doesn't solve do that. that. Yeah, um, I have to give it too much for it to give me a list. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and so I can't just start typing A B you yeah, know, yeah, C or it's totally. Like um, and because you have a motivation with an autocomplete to truncate. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. you could, can't even do A because, like, uh, we probably only want to show you the top five hits when you do an autocomplete. Autocompletes don't give you 30, usually, you know? Right. And if they did, you'd probably have to scroll inside of some little, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. a little iframe thing or whatever. And it gets off. So then you have to do A, 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 B, A, C. <laughs> you can see. Um, so, so I'm gaining confidence now as we talk about this in a list. The thing I don't know is how to how, how to integrate the list into this into this right okay because because I have this design in my mind I have this this um this one two three four five fill in your blanks right and then I have this super fatty long list underneath and I have this sort of in my mind as a as a everything that needs to be there is somehow accessible but I don't like scrolling down to this. And then, and then somehow doing an action on a person, and then, and then that coming back up here, 
you know, I just don't, I don't really like that. Um, so this is actually a pretty tough problem. <laughs> this uh, 205 thing is, is difficult. Um, so this is leading me in a different direction. I'm, I'm experiencing so much conflict with this part of the equation that I'm becoming willing to sacrifice on this part. Okay. So that's going to... So the trade-offs are starting to shift. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I wanted to start with the closest naive idea I could, um, but I, as I fight through all the different sort of interactions between the different conflicts and forces and constraints and everything, I'm seeing that they're all clustering in a different direction. You know what I mean? They're not really clustering around fields. They're clustering around the list somehow. Um, and I, so I'm thinking, okay, what could I do with this list? If that was my sort of starting point, right? Right. So, um, if the list was my starting point, then I could. Okay. If my list is a starting point, then I need a way. I need a way to 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 identify one member of this list and say that's the one. Right. Like that's the one I want. So that's the goal, that's the tests maybe in this. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit like a, I mean, you, maybe you can get the feeling we have many tests that are nested also, right? You know what I mean? Right. It's a, <laughs> which is why it's, um, it's, it's a little bit more of a metaphor than a, you know. Um, but I, I, we're, I'm a little bit like in a sort of subtest here where I'm thinking, okay, it, if I can make this whole list thing work, um, it, if, if what I'm working with are, are members of a list that's all printed out, then when I find the member that I want, I need to be able to do something with it. You're right, because if it's just a huge list and then you have to remember the name, go back here and type it, right. now we're our very first thing we're back where we started. and pasting and that hasn't solved it. Right. So, um, so list can't just be read-only, it has, somehow has to, has to be interactive. Yeah, yeah. So now I have the sense that, okay, it seems like I need to somehow act on this member. So and I'm thinking, how can I act on the member? That's my new test. <laughs> how can I act on the member? Okay, well, I could act on it by, um, uh, I'll start most naively. Let's say this is the, this is this. Okay. You know? Um, and, um, and I have a pick button. Okay? That's the simplest thing I could do. Because now I have the notion of, okay, that's the one I want to choose. Right? Now I have a sort of handful of patterns that are available to me where I can say, well, where could I go with that? Um, I could, for example, um, if each of these things have pick buttons, what happens when you click pick? Does it toggle into a picked state? It could do that. It could be that I pick five and they all toggle into a state. But we go back to something we talked about in the beginning again, right? If we, if we remember we talked about this naive checklist model, right? right? Then we have the problem of, well, what happens when you sort of pick the sixth one? Right or you know, uh, and also how do we deal with ordering? Yep. So, um, so um, something is coming to mind. I'm thinking, um, what if we had uh, five position buttons for each one? Oh. I don't know if this would work, but what if we had, what if we had five position buttons for each one? And um, and and it's a, it's a little bit like um, this naive model is like a checkbox model, right? Yeah. And um, a, a, this is like a radio button model. Okay. Um, the difference is that there's more than one. You know what I mean? Like I can't. I I can pick five, not one. Right. Like I could do this with. I could do this whole list with radio buttons. If the task were pick your favorite. Right, because radio buttons have the right semantics. You know what I mean? Like the you pick one and then the all the rest change. Uh huh. Um, it has the, what do you call it? It's like mutually mutual exclusion or whatever um, is happening with a set of things that have a radio button. Um, and since I, I I I actually have five choices and they happen to we happen to be saying that they mean your five picks, but really it's like five mutually exclusive sort of sets or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so I, I wonder if I could actually think of each of these as being a radio button. So if I had... And maybe we need a sixth of not selected? 
Or, or is that something that you, not to think about right now? Well, uh, how, let's that, no, that's totally we should think about that right now. Can, can we express what we want to express with a grid of radio buttons? Is sort of the question that I have. Okay. Um, there would be a state where none of them are chosen, right? Because only one thing has to be chosen. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, let's say this one is chosen. This was illustration. Pretend that these are just all radio buttons, right? Like, I'll do this. Yeah. Um, if I have to pick one, then I can only pick one that is first, right? Um, I can only pick one that is second. Okay. You know what I mean? I think this is working. So you don't need a sixth state because when you pick two, then that removes your second pick from where else ever. Right, right. Well, anytime you, anytime you, you sort of pick the second spot for a given person, then you're saying this person is second. Um, now, if I were to do this, that's how I'm thinking of it in terms of the logical part of my brain. I'm thinking right now, what is an implementation that I can do that's sort of going to give me the, the, the expressibility? Like, I, how do I express the state I need to express in a way that can be toggled from, from the looking at one member? Like, you know, that's sort of like, I'm trying to think of this structurally, but now very quickly I need to step back from this idea because it seems re reasonable from a logical standpoint. But what I do not want, you know, I think this would be really confusing. If the UI, if the UI was like this, if it was just radio buttons, if there were five, if there were just five radio buttons over and over and over again, that would look freaking weird. Yeah, a huge sea of little. It would look like a cribbage board drops. or something, or you know what I mean. Yeah. Like it would be like, what is that? You know. Um, so I think that there is a, there's a um, something structurally right about these sort of mutually exclusive columns, um, but this the radio a literal radio button is not the answer. So I wonder if I can kind of borrow just from that idea, and I could build some behavior. Would this work? I think it could possibly work. Um, where I have, uh, I actually have buttons that are labeled with the numbers. And then each of these buttons can have a kind of, of uh, depressed state, like a pressed state or an unpressed state. Such that, like, you could have one where two is is pressed in, and that one is set as your number two pick. But I have to say, I don't. This is not. This is not. Um, it's logically working, but it's getting pretty complicated. Okay. So I think I want to back away from this direction. Because in either case, you're going to have a bunch of elements repeated 200 times. Yeah, it's 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 a little too mathematical. It's um it's not going to be. I don't. I just don't like the feeling of it. Um, we could. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I'm not feeling it. Um, I want to explore another direction. Um. I felt better with with. Um, talking about finding a member and then saying somehow this is what I want and I wonder if I can if I can use that I wonder if I can um, if I could have if I could have a rider and I could have something like a pull down that says, um, that says, um, uh, like add to picks, or somehow, some it's not quite right, but it's some 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 kind of like, um, this is a person I want to pick, and then, um, and then when I um, when I reveal this pull down, I can say make first, make second, make third and then I think that's interesting so visually that removes many elements 
tucks it behind a, a pull down that you'll only see when you're actually taking action on it. Yeah, this kind of it, I, I had a sort of um, failing test with this one, which is like um, uh, it's it, I'm seeing red when I look at a screen full of one to three or five all the way down. Right. You know, it's like that's wrong. Um, and I want to fix that. I want to be looking at the at this list of things and feeling like it's really simple and the action that I have to take is really clear, right? So um, probably the way to make the action clear would be to just make one action <laughs> where each thing has this one uh, uh, do something with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. um, and what's cool about that is then um, if I set... Let's say I make this person my second pick. I think I would have less state to juggle all over versus a design like this. Because I don't have to take every single thing and then and then rethink if it's on or off. Um, uh, but I don't know what happens when you choose that. Um, I wonder if... Yeah, this could be good. I think we're making our way back here in a modified form, in okay. a version I would not have expected. I um, like this exploration of kind of like, okay, let's find this, and that helps us understand part of the problem or solves part of it, but not enough, so let's re come back and yeah. go in another direction. Yeah. Um, as long as we, and it's, it's good as long as we don't catch ourselves in a circle, right? If we do, if we go through the same series of conflicts and make the same, and hit the same problems over and over again, then it's like, hmm. You know what I mean? So far, I feel like every time that we I've said, like, no, that's not right, and done something else, it's moved us forward, you know? So I'm also watching for that, right? Because it can happen that sometimes you sit there at a table like this, and you go in circles, yeah. and then you say, okay, you know what? We need to, like, all think about this and come back again tomorrow or something like that. Uh -huh. um, so I'm thinking what can happen here, and here's an idea. Um, I choose what I want to do with this. If I choose what I want to do with this, I need, I, um, well, let me, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sh sh my, my mind is jumping ahead right now a number of steps um, because I have a lot of patterns in my, you know what I mean, about how to do this stuff. So what I'm trying to do is talk it through, you know. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to express this as a conflict just in order to get from point A to point B, right. even though I, I, I might just like leap right now. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you know, we could make this actually a pull down. It's such that when you choose make second, the value of the pull down is second. Okay. And and the member stays right where it is in the list. Um, and then you find somebody else, and then if you say make second to them, it just finds that previous pull down, toggles it back to being unset. Yep. And uh, and then makes this person second. Okay. It makes the new one second, right? Um, but the outcome of that is is a list of 200 things where this one has a little pull down that says one and this one has a little pull down that says two and and you can't see you can't see this little here's my five right right so that i'm that's my sort of test case right now that's in conflict might be in a like different order this is, or yeah. yeah that's a failing state like that that you can't somehow see your your picks you know like together uh -huh. um i don't like that so um that leads me to consider um what if this actually pulled it out of the list, this action. So what if, um, what if when I make my pick, uh, I actually have, uh, I'm actually, this is really an action. I'm not just changing state. It's not just an attribute, it's an action. And remember we talked about before, whenever we go into an action, we want to split it into three, be beginning, middle, and end. Yes. Right? So now I'm in this beginning, middle, and end my frame of mind. I'm thinking, okay, well, what happens? What, what you know? What could be the result of this, right? Where where could it go next? Uh -huh. And because we have the beginning, right? I'm I'm scrolling through a list of names because I want to find the thing that I want. Yeah. Um, which we're not done with, but um, uh, I find the thing that I want, and now I, I say I I want this guy to be second. Where do I go, right? Like what? How you know? Um, what happens? We could do this. You're looking at a member in a collection. So let's say that these are let's say these are each members and the one I've boxed is like one we're interested in right now. And uh, and um, and then you click to make this second, let's say. 
what we could do is um, this this member could actually be substituted. It could disappear, and it could be substituted by a little a little message, a little green bar that says like here's the other ones that were always there above and below that says um you made so and so number two. And then there's a little um uh like I'll zoom in on this. Um, you can imagine I'm zooming in here. <laughs> this is totally mixing all kinds of metaphors and getting confusing. But uh, I'm imagining like a forget about that. I'm imagining a um, a little button on the end, which is like um, I, I go uh, to your pics, which are on the end of that. The top, so. so yeah. So and then now we have a list at the top, maybe. So maybe maybe you you have this um you have this you have this success bar with this button that says go to your picks at the end and says you successfully made so and so number two good job and then you click this and what happens is you scroll up to the top of the screen and on the top of the screen above your list of two hundred is um number two is there and now I'm thinking well if number two is there you can't really have number two by itself. We have a new failure that we didn't expect. It's like, is this, you know, it's funny because in this, this t sort of testing metaphor, the, the tests and the failures appear at the same time. Right. Did you notice that? Like, yeah. I didn't even know that I cared about that. But all I'm see I, it's more about, um, I, I think um, uh, it's, it's a little more like just seeing conflict. You know, you can, I think you can express a, a new, t the, the sort of fail state of a TDD in more abstract terms is just being conflict. Right, uh -huh. so it's more like I have a conflict that I didn't expect that I a new conflict, which is that um, something is right about kind of like going, pulling that out of the list and like you know like moving it to the top into yep. a special bucket of your picks uh, and saying this is number two and elevating it there, but just seeing number two and then a list of the rest is weird. Like okay. it doesn't look like a list. Like number two of what you know what I mean? Like so I'm I actually feel like now I'm wondering if there should be blank slots again. That makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, that there's a blank number one and a blank number three, and so on. And this got populated. So now I'm thinking, okay, um, that could work as a flow. You know what I mean? Um, I, I, I select it. It goes up into a list. I don't leave the list because I might want to select the guy under him next, right? I have a link that takes me to the list, this back to top thing, back to your picks or whatever. If I click that, it takes me to the top, and then I and then I'm pop. I see that I, I've been populating my slots. Um, I like that. Um, I'm seeing a new conflict or a new thing I have to figure out, which is that if in fact I'm back to slots again, and they're not autocomplete, you know, I need to somehow tell you how to fill these in. I was going to ask about that. In your mind, you have the before, the now, and the after. Is it important for the yes, user exactly. to see here yes. where I am and it has and to here's be both. what I need to do? Every every step has to have the full stack of uh, here's our here's our before, middle, and after. Right? I need to have a con I need to have like a design concept. You know what I mean for each of these? They each have to have an implementation, right? And they each have to be evident to the user, right? Like. Each of these moments in the UI like, has this full stack. It has to be implemented, and it also has to be like clear and has to communicate and everything like that. It's not enough that I, we're just talking about it right now, you know. Yep. Um, so, uh, so now I'm thinking about exactly about that beginning part. That's totally where I am now, and I'm thinking like, how do I communicate that this is how it works, you know? And I think, um, I think, uh, I can do that somehow. I have a few different ideas, but I'm starting to think maybe I should get into code because they're feeling a little speculative. I have I have two ideas that come to mind quickly. One of them is using the blank slate pattern. Uh, the sort of blank slate pattern in my mind is that I have these these this place where stuff will be, but it's not there yet. And instead of just showing five blank things as if you can operate on them, I actually have a message overlaid here, uh. which is like your scroll down to, to to start making your picks. 
And then that, that overlay is communicating to me that these are not elements that you can interact with right now. Yeah. And then if I make a pick, then this is no longer in the blank slate or the empty state or whatever. It's now, it has, it's, it has data. It's in a populated state. And, and, and when you see this number two is filled and number two is blank, you know, um, and number two maybe has an X to like remove it, right? Um, I'm going to get how this works, I think, at that point. Okay. I have one alternative design for this. Um, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to be able to know which one is better without being on the computer. Um, and that is um, each one of these blank fields could have a gray text in it that says, like, scroll down to pick somebody below. Right. Scroll down to pick somebody below. Scroll down to pick somebody below. Um, I just don't know if it's going to be clear or not. And I can't judge that by scribbling on the paper. And I'm not going to, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to solve. I don't know how to answer this question for myself um, without actually mocking one of these. This would be a good thing to do in Photoshop because it would be the fastest for me um, okay. to mock these alternatives and see which one. Uh -huh. Does this one, is this one just doing it or not? And that's where test of the Yeah, it's hard to know if that's redundant right. to have the same message five and, times. And, and part of the reason why is because the sort of criteria for this test passing, the sort of criteria for whether this is in conflict or not is re reptile stuff. It's like how my brain works, how my eyes scan, how much repetition affects me. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not so much about concepts and flow and everything like that. It's more like if I look at this, is my brain lighting up in the right way? All right. And the only way to test if your brain lights up in the right way is to put in the put in the electrode Experience or whatever. It. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I have to look at the screen in order to light up those pathways and find out if the ding is going or not. You know, that's the test for that sort of thing. So... Um, I think we have a concept here, you know? Um, yeah. The, the one thing that we haven't figured out yet is um, how to get that email address. Because do we want you to scroll through the 195 that you didn't pick? But I think we could probably figure that out. I'm not worried about it, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time sketching it right now. Like, I'm only sketching about stuff I'm worried about. Yeah. Right? Like, sketching, it's not like this is the process. First, you sketch everything, and then you do, the, and that you know what I mean. Like it's not like that at all. It's more like um, uh, when you're worried about something, sketching can help you, right? It's, it's another tool for, for right. figuring out the problem. It's yeah. just a medicine to the pain of, of worry, you know. Like I'm not confident enough to spend time in code because I think I can go down the wrong direction and I'm going to screw around wasting time. So I'm going to remove that worry by by proving myself that I, my thinking is clear about what I'm going to do. But it doesn't mean that I have to sketch the whole app. You know, I just need to sketch enough that I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to stop, you know. So um, I, I have some thoughts about this, and I'll talk it through or think it through myself without sketching just to be like, is that really sane? So I'll talk that out right now. Um, I don't think it's going to be okay to scroll past 195 and then have an email form on the bottom. Right. But I do think that when you've made your fifth selection, that we can do a change of state on the page. And we can actually, we can collapse this whole list. Uh -huh. And we can say, you've picked your five. Are you happy? You know? If so, here's what you do next. Yep. And then just type in your email address, and then we will submit your uh, picks, and uh, you're entered to win the contest. We could even, that might be a good place to feature the shirt, actually. Okay. Right? You're, you're moments you away from five. winning the Ferrari or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I'm not worried about it. You see what I mean? Like, I feel like we can figure that out. That's not going to be a problem. So uh -huh. I'm not going to like, I don't have to sketch that. Brief question. With, you're not drawing 100% of the UI on these sketches. That is some, partly aided by the fact that you're going to actually get, get in there and do code or, or right. put things together in Photoshop. Right. If someone was only doing UI sketches and then somebody else implements it, that kind of changes the whole process then, right? I mean, it seems like that's an important part. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, or do you ever work I never, through most of this I never and go then hand things this. off? I, to me, oh, this okay. is fully so you, fleshed out. Okay. Because um, I... So then it would be uh, verbally or... The whole time things? we were going through this, we were talking about conflicts. And these sketches were the things that I had to draw in order to feel like I had resolved those conflicts. Okay. And um, anything that's not a conflict can be filled in later. Like anything that I don't think is a problem that's going to screw up my plan, um, I don't really care about. So actually, it's not really true that I'm going to build out more than this. 
like when I when I go in here and I start coding right now, um, I'm not going to build much more than exactly what we sketched. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna build out one of these. Uh huh. And it's gonna go. It's gonna get repeated by a partial, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make like that is a complete sketch. You know, there's I mean the only thing you could have done to make it go further is actually use letters instead of squiggles for the name. Mm -hmm. um, the I have the pull down sketched up, so I'm gonna do that. Um, I know that I'm gonna have uh, some kind of blank slate on top in the beginning. That's gonna change into a populated state, and then I have this list here. Like that's the stuff that I'm actually gonna work on right now. Um, so it's not even the case really that there's something I've sketched that I haven't done, you know, but. Um, but maybe your question was more about when you have a handoff situation. That's it, yeah. I mean, are you mostly in the case where you'll actually write the code to implement these ideas, or do you, you hand these sketches off to someone else who starts writing right. the code? Right, so um, if, we, if you were the designer who was going to implement this, um, we would be sitting together just like we are now and going through this process. Okay. Um, we, I mean, the guys that I work with here, I, we, we know each other, and we have all these patterns internalized, so we don't... I mean, the whole thing would have been a lot faster. We wouldn't have said as much. Right. But um, uh, um, uh, we together have had the experience of working through the problems, you know? And there's some sort of impressions in our brain floating around right now about what the plan is uh -huh. that corresponds to this stuff. Um, but do you see all this stuff on the wall? Yeah. It probably looks pretty similar to what we've been sketching just now, you know? And um, that is like exactly this. We usually do it either on the paper, but nobody takes the paper back to their desk, or it's on the wall and nobody takes it back to the because um, that that designer was here. They experienced the walkthrough. They remember the key points, and uh, and they're going to go back and they're going to work on this. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there isn't for us. There isn't this moment where everything is designed and then it's built. Right. It's a it's a step by step yeah. alternation of like design what I need to design in order to resolve the things that, I, that are not known or not working or whatever, and then build them until those things are known, and then see what's not working from there, right? And what's not working from there could be that you're going back and making changes, or it could be that you're going forward into new territory, but it's always this sort of like step-by-step uh, -step motion. Yep, that makes sense.